Okay, good morning. Uh, well, uh, who am I? I'm a developer evangelist that's keeping half. I'm a Pythonista and Django now uh, from the early releases of Django. And I also like to, to well, to reverse engineer stuff. Uh, so, okay, let's let's uh, let's check why why we need to have escaping. Uh, okay, first of all, uh, we always like APIs. I mean, if if every every service offers an API, it will be really awesome. But people um, doesn't know all the trade-offs that came with API. For example, uh, they know how they how you access the service. And uh, well, uh, the most interesting of of, uh, of those services are not normally available through the API. I could think of a couple of samples. For example, if you are checking uh, Google Places, they only offer five reviews of each business. And well, normally you want to get all the reviews uh, from a single business. Uh, so well, the, the unique workaround is to use with escaping. And well, there's also this semantic web term that came ago a couple of years ago. And uh, well, who, who of, of you knows what, what is RDF? Or those semantic uh, terms? I mean, nobody, nobody uses them. It, the web is really broken. There was some, some stats, uh, well, like uh, five years ago from Opera. Uh, they were checking how really broken were, were the web, and they told that the most popular tag was a title, not body. So you can make sense of, of how really broken is the, is the web. So what, what is uh, web escaping? Well, the main goal of web escaping is to, to get the structured data from unstructured sources, in this case, well, web pages. And uh, you may be asking, what what what, what are the kind of, of uh, things that we can do with with, with uh, web escaping? Well, uh, as, as as the last bullet, bullet point says, your imagination is the limit. But for example, uh, the most used examples are for for price monitoring, uh, for leads generation, uh, for aggregate information. Let's say I want to aggregate uh, jobs positions or or any other kind of information. And uh, well, if, if we want to start with web escaping, we need to know HTTP. We need to speak HTTP. Some people uh, think that it is obvious, but it's not. Uh, so well, there are some, uh, all of us know that there are some methods like get, post, those are the typical ones, but there are, there are way more methods than those ones. We, did, uh, we also know to know uh, all the status codes, like 200, that's okay. Uh, 404, that's not found, for example. 418, that's a T pod code. Uh, five, uh, well, 500 are all the error codes, and uh, who knows uh, what's the code 999 for? Well, that's the, the code that Yahoo uh, responses when uh, you get blocked by them. Um, we also know. We also need to know uh, what are how, how to deal with headers and the query string. Uh, for example, the accept language header is uh, quite interesting because it, if it, it depends on uh, which language are you receiving the website. Also, user agent is quite useful, uh, not just for uh, emulating uh, being a real browser, but also you can you can try to to emulate to. to to, uh, to, I mean, to emulate being a mobile device. And uh, well, uh, many of, um, on many occasions, it is way easier to scrape a mobile layout than a desktop one. And we also need to know how to deal with persistent, with cookies. So if, if we want to perform a request using Python, uh, well, we just check the standard library. As we remember, Python is batteries included. So let's check standard library, and when we found this URL to but if you check the API, I, well, I, I don't recommend it to you as, uh, unless you want to suffer uh, to use your lift too. But this uh, kind of trade, uh, 
this uh, Python request library, and uh, it's like HTTP for humans. It has a really clean API, and I recommend it. And it is an easy to use as, as this. So if you want to perform a request, this is, well, it's, it's one line, a plus import. Uh, so you perform that request on the, on the and you get a, a chunk of a big string. Uh, so, how do you deal with with uh, that big chunk of, of data? Well, um, many people think about using regular expressions or string manipulation methods, but what they don't know it is that HTML is not a regular language. Uh, this is a, a really famous uh, Stack Overflow uh, answer. Uh, basically, the last line is, have you, have you tried using an XML parser instead? Okay, so what, what HTML parsers do we have uh, available at, on the Python ecosystem? Well, we have LXML. It's a photonic binding for some uh, really fast C libraries. And it's the de facto way to, well, to parse HTML, I think. And there's also beautiful soup uh, beautiful soup is it's it's not a parser. It's it's just a wrapper around parsers. For example, the HTML parser is the standard library one. It also offers a wrap over LXML, and also there is this HTML5 li uh, library that it it, it works uh, really good if you are trying to scrape really broken websites. I recommend I recommend that one. Okay. So let's check a full example of how to perform a request and uh, get some data. So in this case, I want to get all the all the all the all the talks from this conference. So what I is perform a request, uh, I parse it uh, through LXML, and uh, we just perform some expats to get the data. It is really clean. It's really easy. Uh, I think every, everybody understand that that piece of code. And uh, one thing that I, I want to say is um, m many people try to, to don't learn expat. And uh, well, if you want to, to be in the, in the, in the web scraping business, you need to, to, I mean, to learn expat. Uh, otherwise, there is people that try to reinvent expat. I have seen so many, for example, Golang libraries lately that try to do some kind of weight text path, it doesn't work. So, well, we have this, this piece of code, and uh, let's say I want to perform two million requests to Amazon.com or whatever site. How, how does that piece of code scale? Uh, how do we taste, uh, test it, etc.? It's not that easy. So you can say, okay, let's let's uh, spam some threads, or uh, let's use the event, or even let. I mean, uh, it doesn't work, uh, or it works for a little time until it gets painful. So what I recommend is a scrapeify early on. Uh, it, it has a, a bit of a learning curve, but it it really it's really worth it. So for those who are you know scrapey. Uh, Sane has been telling you about this KP. Uh, so, well, the, the creators are here at this room <laughs> of SKP. Uh, so, well, SKP is an open source and collaborative framework for extracting the, the data unit from websites in a fast, uh, simple, yet extensible way. Uh, well, of course, it's, it's uh, open source and it has a really healthy community. And okay, let's, let's, let's get to it. We have, uh, well, Scape has an interactive console, an interactive, interactive cell. So we can just launch it through a Scape cell and the URL that we want to, to check. And I, it's, it's, a, it's a really good tool for uh, checking some expats, doing some quick tests. But, uh, well, it's also useful for debugging uh, your spiders. So it's as easy as, as uh, when we, we, we perform this command scrapy cell URL, and we get on the interactive cell, so we can, we can play with some objects that are already populated. For example, we connect this response URL, we can uh, get an XPath from that response, and uh, we can open it, the response on the browser, 
or even fetch any, I mean, fetch any, any new website. So I, if you are starting with the Scrapy, I recommend you to, to launch the Scrapy uh, cell console and play with it. Uh, so let's, let's start a Scrapy project. Uh, it's an ACS Scrapy start project on the name of the project, and it creates a layout. This is way similar to what Django does. Uh, and yeah, I mean, we, we, we got a lot of ideas from Django. Uh, it's a really good project. And uh, what I really like about Django is that it has, it offers a unique way of doing things that works uh, good every time. And it's creepy, enforce that, enforce that and uh, I really like, I really like it. So okay, let's let's check what, what a spider looks like. Not, not that one, not that one, it's more like this. Uh, well, it is just a Python class with some attributes and uh, you can see a, a method. So, uh, how we do a, a spider? What's the anatomy of a spider? Well, we need we have some mandatory attributes at the class level, like the name of the of the spider, the allowed domains, and the start URLs. The start URLs are, are going to be the the requests that are going to be performed, and uh, that method parse method it's it is just a callback. So basically, the scrape engine perform performs a request to to a sample.com slash one HTML, and we just we just uh, get the response on that callback. In this case, we're just logging that we got a response. So let's check a more advanced example. In this case, uh, we are not using a start URLs, but a, a function, a generator in this case. So we are generating, in this case, three requests, sample.com slash one slash two slash three, and we are pointing them to, to the parse method callback. And we are, get, we are um, extracting data from, from those uh, websites at the callback. So basically what we're doing is we're performing an XPath, going, going through some H3 elements, and we are yielding items. Uh, we'll get later to see what, what are items, but basically they are like dictionaries. Uh, it, it is, uh, on a structure of Scrapy, it's, and it's quite useful. And then we are going through the links and we are yielding request. So on the same callback, we can yield either items or either request. Uh, it, it works out of the box. And well, the same example, uh, in this case, uh, we, we have uh, released uh, Scrapy 1.0 and we, uh, we already load to don't use items. I, I will show what are items, but we, we can just yield uh, dictionaries, uh, normal Python dictionaries, and it, it works as well. So items. Uh, items are just uh, a class with some attributes, and they define how, how a structure looks like. Um, but they, they came pretty, I mean, they are pretty good to validate data. We, we have an, an Indian pipeline and we can do plenty of stuff with, with those. So uh, what kind of stuff? For example, we have the concept of item loaders. So basically, we just populate items. It's like an OR, ORM. And uh, we have uh, in, uh, input and output, so pre and post processors uh, that are normal Python functions. So. Basically, imagine that we are scraping, um, let's say, a date from any any website, I, and we want to format that date into, uh, let's say, uh, the ISO JavaScript standard. So with item loaders, the, it is just a function that get the date and transform it. And then we have item exporters. So Scrapy has a built-in support for generating feed exports in multiple formats, like JSON, CCV, XML, and storing them in multiple backends. So it's quite cool, we can just run any spider, and uh, the result goes, could go to an FTP, uh, to Amazon S3, to the local file system, out of the box. And for all of you who use Django, uh, there is, a, we have a thing called Django item. So basically, uh, we map an item to the definition of a Django model, and it just works. It's, that's, that's pretty useful. So what, uh, what happens under the hood? 
well, let's check the architecture. Basically, we have uh, a thing called the scrape engine that runs on top of Twisted. And we have one thing called the scheduler that it's in charge of a scheduling request. And it goes to the downloader and that fetches the website uh, from the internet and feeds them back to the spiders. And we have different uh, stages and middlewares through all the stages. So we can modify the, res the request, modify the, re modify the response, modify all the items. It's pretty pluggable. And then uh, we have, I mean, the spiders return either request or either items. The request goes back to the scheduler and the items uh, goes through the item pipeline. So, well, I think it's quite easy to, to check what is the, the flow. So, uh, what kind of things we can do on an item pipeline? One, uh, we can set some default values uh, for fields. Imagine that we, are, uh, that we have some fields on an item and we want to set a default value. It's, that it's also quite useful for validating scraped scrape data. So we can, we can say which items are not valid. Uh, it's also quite useful for checking for uh, duplicates. So imagine that uh, some website is really broken and pagination doesn't work okay, and you are getting the same website again and again, while you are not, not getting the same item in this case. It is also uh, useful for storing items. Imagine that you want to, to save items to Amazon, DynamoDB, or any other uh, DB out there. So you can just write an item pipeline to save each, it each item or, or a, on a Amazon uh, DynamoDB, for example. And also we have, uh, it's, it's a place to write uh, third party integrations. Uh, so if, um, if you have for, uh, an item with a couple of, I um, mean, a product description, and you want to translate it to another language, you could say, okay, I will get, uh, I will uh, integrate with Google Translate API, translate some fields, and, and well, the item get the translated fields. Uh, we have middlewares. Uh, what are middlewares, middlewares for? Well, they can, they can, uh, they can process requests and items. Uh, basically, they are useful for uh, session handling. It, that's that's uh, out of the box on Scrapey. Uh, that's al already working. So um, it, it handles cookies for you. But it is middleware uh, for a red request. So imagine that you get a 500 response or a malformed response from any website. You can say, okay. Uh, let's retry this request and it gets back to the scheduler and it will be scheduled later. Uh, we can also modify request, for example, say, I want to proxy this request to uh, an, a specific proxy. And uh, we can also use it for randomized user agent, so we can say that each different request use a different user agent. And, uh, well, uh, Scrapy is batteries included. We have uh, it has login uh, from Scrapy 1.0. It's the Python standard login. It has also, it has also a very powerful model for stats collection. Uh, it also supports testing contracts. It's called contracts. It's a twist, I think it's a twisted term. And we have. Uh, it also offers a telnet console that uh, it's a way to inspect an already running Scrapy process. So you can introspect an uh, already running spider. You can do quite a lot of things, like for example, check if there are memory leaks or pause the pause on receiving the the spider. And the talent console is is really handy. So for all of you that that want to check an an, an example of uh, of a scrapy project, just go to github.com slash scrapy half slash Python speakers, and they have. A lot of spiders from different uh, conferences, and uh, we basically scrape data for uh, all the speakers at those conferences, and do some visualization, so and, uh, so, so we can know how many of them are male or female. So it is quite interesting to see how uh, how women are, are are I mean more more attendees are growing year by year. 
And okay, this is the interesting part for uh, all of you that already know scraping. Uh, so, how to avoid getting banned? Well, there are, there's a handful of quick tips. Uh, the first of all is rotate your user agent or use a, a user agent that simulates a real browser or even Googlebot. Uh, and uh, also disable cookies is, is, uh, is mandatory. So if you are not acti accessing a, a protected local, I mean a protected user um, data, you can just disable cookies uh, and it works. And it works uh, really cool. I mean, they, normally these websites try to track you through those through cookies. Uh, also, randomized download delays helps. They might be tracking on uh, how much time are between uh, all the requests. So you can randomize the time between requests, and uh, well, it's it, they can detect you that easy. Uh, also, use a pool of rotating IPs. Well, that's that's the most cl uh, classic classic approach. So you can buy uh, a bunch of proxies and proxy all the requests through through those uh, all the requests through those proxies. But there is also Cronera. Uh, this is a product from 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 us from Scraping Hub, and basically uh, we provide you an IP, and you perform all the requests through that IP, and we take care of hand handling bans blocks, replacing proxies, rotating them. So it's like magic, okay? Let's say I want to perform two million requests to Amazon, okay? It works. Uh, so uh, for, uh, if, if, if uh, I've been speaking about Scrapey more in terms of doing uh, targeted uh, crawls, but in case that you want to, to, to know how, to, how you can approach a broad crawl, uh, there is a library that we, are, that we have open source recent, recently. It's called Frontera. And uh, well, yesterday my, my coworker um, gave a presentation about, about these slides, so please check, check the, those slides and check YouTube. Or come, come by our booth uh, and we can discuss how, how to use Frontera. So okay, let's, let's say we have brought a bunch of a bunch of spiders, and now we want to, to deploy them somewhere. Well, we have a, a tool called a Scrapey Demon. Uh, of course, it's open source, and it provides a web service uh, where you can uh, send, uh, it, it's all over JSON. Uh, so basically, it's a service demon to run uh, Scrapey spiders, so you can upload your, uh, I mean, deploy your, your project and run a schedule new spiders, a schedule new jobs, checking the status of, of those jobs, and it, it works okay. Uh, but we also have uh, a, uh, a, scraping, a scraping cloud. It's also from a scraping hub. Uh, it's a commercial platform, uh, but we have a free quota, and uh, basically it's a visual web interface where you can deploy your spiders uh, schedule them, manage them, monitor them. Uh, it's really also useful for QA people. And well, I recommend if you are into into Scrapey, I recommend you to give it a try. We have, we have a free quota, and if you can buy our booth, we can provide you a bigger one. Um, about us, a bit about us. Well, we do we do tons of open source, uh, starting from Scrapey. Uh, we have uh, open source recently from Terra. And well, uh, you can just check our GitHub profile. And it's, it's uh, I mean, I'm really proud of, of our team and uh, how, they, how, they are, how they approach with, with open source. And we are fully a fully remote distributed team. We are 110 people worldwide, fully remote. And we have really great talent out there. Uh, so, well, this is the mandatory sales slide. Uh, basically, we do professional services of Scrapey, and we have two products, uh, Scrapey Cloud and Corera. I have already told you what, what they are. Uh, so please, if you're interested, just, just uh, ask our, our, our booth about them. And well, uh, we're hiring constantly, so uh, 
if if uh, you want to to feel like a Spiderman, uh, get, get in contact with us. Uh, it's a nice place to work, a fully remote team. And well, uh, that's all. Gracias. And uh, I think it's time for uh, Q&A. So if you have any questions. We have a lot of time for questions. No worries, so I'll ask something. Uh, did somebody raise their hand? Oh, there, sorry. Um, what about uh, JavaScript intensive uh, websites, like with lots of Ajax requests? And I have, uh, I, in my experience, I, 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 I've been using a uh, scrapey, but on top of that, uh, some headless browser like Splinter or something like that. Do you have plans to integrate something like that? Yeah, we have we have an open source project called uh, Splash. Okay. Uh, you can find it on our GitHub profile, and basically, it's an scriptable headless WebKit engine uh, that offers an a JSON API, and we have uh, uh, also another project open source called Scrapy JS that integrates with Splash directly uh, so yeah you, you can use this plus for uh, uh, for uh, I mean for for uh, performing all the requests uh, through a webkit engine any more questions so uh, I would like to ask uh, okay. all of uh, the previous two talks have been about HTML do you have any solution for example if the data I want is in PDF <laughs> That's a tricky one. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you can fit scrapy with what, what, uh, any kind of data, really. But uh, I think that you need to, to check uh, any PDF uh, library on Python to deal with PDF. But yeah, you, you, can, you can use all the scrap engine, the pipeline, uh, definitely. But yeah, there is, for, at the scrapy level, there is no support for PDF. You need to use a third party library. Thanks. Not so much a, oh, hello? Yeah, not so much a question, but a comment. Um, of course, one of the big drawbacks of scrapy is it's not Python 3. Um, so I just wanted to mention we'll be doing a sprint on that at the weekend. Uh, if anybody's available, please come. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, we, we, are, we are holding a scrapy workshop this Friday. Also for all those, all, all of you that want to learn more about Scrapey, uh, we have our booth outside, so please come by and say hi. And we have some cool swag as well. And also, we are trying to hold uh, some sprints this weekend about Scrapey. So if you're interested, please uh, tell us, and yeah, we are, we are really open to that. Thanks. <laughs>